promptly teamed up with the Allies. Starting in 1941, Franklin Roosevelt began sending airplanes, tanks, and guns to the beleaguered Soviet troops. If Hitler was going to be stopped, the war in Russia had to be won. In June 1942, the Nazis began an offensive in southern Russia. The fighting settled in Stalingrad, where it quickly degenerated into fierce house-to-house -house combat. This time, Stalin let his commanders do their jobs. In the early part of the war, when he intervened, it was almost always a mistake. It caused several disasters. But by the time of Stalingrad, he was not intervening directly. He was a bit, but, but not on the scale he had been before. He did leave it to the generals. And um, uh, so that was a success. Nazi troops began retreating from Stalingrad on Christmas Day, 1942. The war would drag on for another two and a half years, but Soviet victory was now in sight. When Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin met in Tehran in 1943, Joseph Stalin was reintroduced to the West as kindly Uncle Joe. Churchill even presented Stalin with a sword of honor to commemorate the victory at Stalingrad. By 1945, the Soviet Union had won the war, but the cost was enormous. Over 25 million Soviets had died, six times as many casualties as Germany. Stalin vowed to never let Russia be this vulnerable again. So Soviet forces liberated their neighbors from the Nazis, but the shadow of Moscow never left. Eastern Europe, the Balkans, and Eastern Germany were soon all within the Soviet sphere. At the Yalta Conference in 1945, the Allies met to discuss the post-war world. Stalin made it clear this territory was under his control. For Russia, fascist Germany was just another Western power come to Russia from the West. In those days, armies had to come through Eastern Europe, through Poland. And therefore, after this war with its losses, the Stalin regime was not going to settle for anything less than a guaranteed security zone in Eastern Europe. And that was the essence of the altar. The Allies met one last time at Potsdam, and while they may have posed politely for the newsreel cameras, new U.S. President Truman and Churchill were unhappy with Stalin's behavior in Eastern Europe. The alliance against the Nazis was over. The Cold War was on. An iron curtain has descended across the continent. Behind that line lie all the capitals of the ancient states of Central and Eastern Europe. Back home, Stalin was even more popular than before. Grateful Russians hoped that the magnificent victory would sweep clean the miseries of the past. But the war had only distracted, not changed, Joseph Stalin. Thousands of returning soldiers were sent to labor camps because Stalin was afraid they would revolt against life at home now that they had seen the splendors of Europe. Even his loyal translator was not above suspicion. My pass was taken away and I went out waiting that I'll be arrested next day. But two weeks passed and nothing happened. So I even didn't go home at night. I knew that they usually arrest people at night. And then all of a sudden came a call from a magazine, a weekly magazine, and I was invited to work for that. And from the editor of this magazine, I understood that it was Molotov who protected me. I don't know why, you know. Uh, four assistants before me of Molotov were shot. Why I was not shot, I don't know why. Somehow he just, you know, put me there and probably also got some kind of blessing by Stalin but not to touch me. Few got off so easily. The crowds may have adored him, but Stalin was still sure everyone was out to get him. His newest public enemy was the Jews. Many leading Jewish intellectuals were tried as enemies of the state and killed. He even arrested the most prominent doctors in Moscow, many of whom were Jewish, because he thought they were plotting to poison him and his advisors. Quite a lot of doctors were arrested, but 
They're almost all Jews, but they named a group of eight or ten of whom three were Gentiles and seven Jews. So he said, we're not anti-Semitic, we're arresting Gentiles as well. Well, one of them was his own doctor. He wanted to arrest him because he told him to lay off politics for a bit. He, he thought this was a plot, naturally. On Stalin's 70th birthday in 1949, pictures of the great leader were projected into the sky over Moscow. His all-knowing, all-seeing eye was everywhere. But his omniscience couldn't keep time from catching up to him. After a long feast on February 28th, 1953, Joseph Stalin had a paralyzing stroke. Over the next few days, he slowly suffocated to death. He died on the morning of March 5th. The funeral was an orgy of grief. Soviets couldn't imagine life without their God and Father. I was in Moscow, only about uh, four blocks from the place where Stalin's body was laying after his death, lots of people were crying, and they were crying because when you live in paternalistic society, you are raised to believe that he makes all the decisions for you, and without him, the nation will fall apart. Stalin's eventual successor, Nikita Khrushchev, would bring a wave of honesty to Soviet politics. But Stalin's memory would not go quietly. In 1956, Nikita Khrushchev gave an extraordinary speech at a closed session of the 20th Party Congress. He said that while Stalin had been a great leader, he had committed terrible crimes against the Soviet people. His listeners were stunned and some were angry. For a lot of people, it was the beginning of the end of belief in the system. Because if the man who ruled Russia for almost uh, 30 years could be so wrong and so maniacal and so horrible and so bloodthirsty, what did that say about all of them who had lived under his rule and had been a part of building this system? Leonid Brezhnev and his successors went back to the silence of the past. But in 1985, when Mikhail Gorbachev became general secretary, he vowed to break the stranglehold that Stalinism had left behind. His reforms pulled the Soviet Union away from the secrecy and terror of the past. They also broke the country apart. For many years, I thought that the system that we inherited could be improved. But that was an illusion. The Stalinist model could not be improved because it was imposed by the Bolsheviks on our country, a system that assumed a monopoly of power, a dictatorship of one party, repression, coercion, the suppression of political and cultural freedom. It is very difficult to go beyond, to move away from that system. In fact, some want to move back to it. Today, there is a resurgence of nostalgia for the strong hand of Joseph Stalin's reign. I'm proud because during the Stalin era, our country became one of the most developed. In what way? We were respected. No, nobody was afraid of us. After the revolution of 1917, the country was revived. It became industrialized. We believed in the future. We had hope. We had belief for a better life. In Georgia, Joseph Stalin's birthplace has again opened up as a museum. In a chaotic world, Stalinism is fondly remembered by some as a time of clarity and strength. It's a legacy that won't easily fade.